Hey guys, and welcome back to Reverse Rebirth. We're going to be able to fit two worlds into this particular part. Man, we spoil you guys. Gee, Tom, why do your playthroughs have two worlds? <laughs> oh, you meme-loving shitlord. <laughs> well, it's better I bring it up as opposed to somebody else bringing it up, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to kick things off with Agrabah, and uh, like I said last time, don't expect to uh, see Riku experiencing any fond or otherwise memories. No, we're just going straight to Jafar. Uh, which is weird, because I'm not really sure how much in detail they went into this in, like, the original Kingdom Hearts 1, but do you think Riku ever interacted with the whole, you know, what was it, the, uh, what was it called, the Masters of Evil? I'm trying to think of the DC term. <laughs> the Disney League of Evil. Yeah, yeah. Did they, uh, did he ever actually, like, speak with them and have conversations with them like did he pal around with hades for a little while like what's going on well we definitely know he interacted with maleficent and also captain hog yeah i think he did they just never really went into detail which kind of sucks because i would have loved if reverse rebirth let them have a little banter between each other based on those memories i think that would have been entertaining all right, what we're going to focus on here, I'm just going to show you how darkness mode works. Focus on card breaking people, and you can see the D points going up in the top <laughs> left. So try and get as many D points as you can. You know, he does that big old flip, and then he enters dark mode. Now, what I loved about this, in the original GBA version of the game, it used the sprites from the Repliku fights. Uh -huh. So he had that problem where when he walked up and down he was still flat 2D you know like final fight kind of style uh -huh. while his normal sprites actually had him animate and go in a different direction it was fucking awkward and really weird to aim. So if they like keep breaking you or you keep getting hit you will go out of darkness mode which is not really a good place to be in but uh, so long as you keep leveling up your D points you'll be uh, fine you'll be able to take like more hits before you revert. I'm going to keep calling it D-Mode. I don't care. That's the funniest thing. <laughs> Shift into the D-Dimension. <laughs> well, I mean, we can make a ton of D-Jokes, you know? You got a D... <laughs> and that's it? That's the only D-Joke? <laughs> oh, man, we're clearly running on fumes at this point. Reverse for birth, everybody. You still get, you still get uh, uh, you know, most of the cool moves that Repliku had. You know, you get Dark Faraga. You do it in the right way, you get uh, Dark Aura. And here you can actually team up with Mickey, who also heals you and replenishes your deck. His card basically does it all. Yeah, Riku doesn't have, like, any of a friend cards. He's a bit of a loner, but he has a great relationship with Mickey. And I think I mentioned this on Twitter, in that Riku is such a based character because... He has a king for a friend, yet he treats him with all the respect that you'd expect, you know, to give to a friend. But he still uses his royal title and whatnot. Well, I mean, even then, Mickey has always been kind of chill as a king. Like, he never really insisted on the title and everything like that. He just seemed like, you know, hey, I'm the king, but all right, we're cool. You know, we're like equals, so that's fine. Didn't see any crime around Disney Castle, that's for sure. You're not seeing any crime around in Agrabah, probably because the Heartless are investigating. When Heartless are on the scene, no crime happens in Agrabah. Do they think they, they have, like, cops version of that? You know, but with Heartless? I'm not following, mate. Uh, you never seen cops before? No, I know what cops is. It's just your attempt at a joke has baffled and bewildered me. Well, I'm just trying to fill time here, dude. <laughs> That's reverse reverse for you, I guess. I love it in the original. He doesn't say darkness. He goes, Rah! I'm not gonna rely on the darkness, but here I am using it for this simple fight I could do by myself! <laughs> Dude, darkness is so cool. Why didn't Adam tell me about this shit? <laughs> Man, why did I give it up? I can see why everybody loves this shit. Uh, we all know what the map card roulette does, so uh, just focus on like the map cards you want. I get two keys for the price of one. Ah, no Moogle rooms, of course, because uh, what would a guy who has a set deck in each world need with extra cards, you know? You probably just walk in the one, I'm not giving you any free cards. Show me your license. Go away, darkness boy. <laughs> yeah, we don't uh, we don't sell cards to your type around here. Oh, oh, there's a knuckle. What? It's true. You gotta watch out for those people who entrench themselves in darkness. That Terra boy ain't right, you know? Oh, hell, Dragon, you are quite the one. All right, you remember what boss we fight in Agrabah, right? Iago. Oh, yes. Well, actually, you're not far from the truth there, because <laughs> Iago is the thing you've got to hit. That's true. I mean, that's why I brought it up. I mean, like, I, although I gotta say, you know, like, 
You think Jafar would have thought out his wish a little bit more to make it so that you don't have to just smack his lamp like 20 times to beat him? I mean, I understand that's the source of the genie's power and things like that, and he basically lives in there. That's your home now, Jafar. You have to sit in that. Ah, oh, itty bitty living space. I had a bitch of a time trying to record this boss, and I'll tell you for why. I kept, like... I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you an example instead of flailing with my words. You know how Aqua kind of controls in Birth by Sleep, right? Uh, vaguely? I mean, she moves in the general direction I tell her to, and she has that cartwheel kind oh, of Stop thing. being so fucking... You know, such a pedant. Anyway, what I was trying to get across is she does those, like, two swings, and then the final one kind of goes overhead. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember you were talking about that when we were doing Birth by Sleep. And it's kind of the same with Riku. He's, like, a lot more fierce with his attacks compared to Sora, and I don't want, know why I initiated a card duel with Jafar. He's not the thing I need to hit here. Really, whenever I've seen card duels done in, like, uh... Good aim, by the way. Um, when I've seen card duels done in other, like, YouTube videos, what they tend to do is they just throw every card at them in super rapid succession. That's usually enough to win the duel. Mm, well, it depends on the deck you're given. Anyway, the point I was trying to make back there is that sometimes, like, Riku's swipe, because it's so crazy and ferocious, will just go around Iago, and I just kept having a bitch of a time trying to get a decent take. It's not that it has to be, you know, a successful take. It needs to look good as well. I mean, I understand what you're talking about. It, it was just basically the arc of his attack, and I, I especially, you know, remember that with Aqua, in terms of she's got that little delay... And like that last bit of her swing, so you do have to watch out for that at times. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, in the Cinderella world, you fight those plant things, and they're so small, her keyblade just goes right over them in the final hit. I always thought it was also kind of weird that even though, like, you know, Riku kind of renounced the darkness in the later games, he still had darkness related abilities. Like, you think his Faraga would have been like a white Faraga or something like that to represent how he's purified himself and shit like that? Actually, you're completely wrong in that regard. He didn't renounce the darkness. He came, to, he came to terms with it and uses it for his own. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. And really, that's kind of what you have to do with a lot of negative emotions. To get all real life with you for a minute, let me just let me uh, break this down for you, brother, and help you live your life in a better way. Okay. You don't really kind of fight the emotions you feel. You don't try to suppress them. What I found is actually more effective is to acknowledge and just admit that you have them. And counteractively, paradoxically, strangely, to use all these words incorrectly, yeah. when you do that, it actually allows you to kind of just be at peace and let that emotion fade a lot faster. This is some RL experience I'm giving to you right now. Thank you, thank you. And that's um, one of the core themes of Reverse Rebirth. It's that Darkness isn't just all icky and filled with cooties. No, it's a it's a part of life. I'm sorry, it's the only word that was coming to mind. We've never described it that way before, filled with cooties, but I'm going to do that from now on. Wow, this is a bit anticlimactic coming out of a world. No cutscene. B11F. 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 I, I don't really show it off right now, but you know how Sora has his daughter, all right? Mm -hmm. Riku just flips. Well, it's practically the same thing. Was he able to do that in the original version of the game? I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time. I have identified the scent. It is Riku. He is using Axe Darkness Body Spray. I was going to say Axe Body Spray. You know, he's been blocking darkness for 16 hours. <laughs> Mm, I must research this guy. Uh, these days, if Vexen's research is just him going to the wiki, I can't find anything. I looked. Going in like an endless loop trying to find the right ability or magic slide. Trust me, I speak from RL experience there. Meanwhile, they're keeping Namine in the corner because they keep moving here to progressively worse and worse places to keep a prisoner. This doesn't have a floor. Well, I don't care. Sit in there. So yeah, Sora's story is ongoing right now. In a kind of fucked way, Sora and Riku both arrived in Castle Oblivion at roughly the same time. It's kind of interesting, though, to see what the other uh, side of the organization is doing. It sort of makes me wish that all the organization was at play at this time, because when you get the Kingdom Hearts 2, there's only, like, what, five, six of them left, and it's kind of not as impressive. <laughs> not a very organized organization. Yeah, the organization one half. That's what they should have called it. I kind of like how the organization plays out 
in reverse for both more than the uh, the OG story, so to speak. I like Alexius, Vex is still here. I mean, you, what you lose with Axel and Marluxia, you get with the big, gruff, Hulk-like guy. You just like big, beefy dudes, don't you? My lawyers have advised me not to answer that statement. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably for the best, yes. Also, he's an Earth kind of user, and I, I resonate with that element. Oh, because you like Avatar? I guess, I guess. I just now want to see Lexus do, like, that big stomp, like, in the movie. and then Lexus, he sends out a little he's not rock. a car. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think the organization would have been a lot more interesting if they could all turn into vehicles. Ah, uh, yes, the 15th member of the organization, Lamba Exagini. Oh, it's Sideswipe. What are you doing here? Same deal as with Acrobar. No cutscenes, none of that jazz. We're just going to keep fighting our way through rooms until we get to Parasite Cage. Of course, we have to fight him again. Got a new deck now. Don't expect me to give, like, detailed analysis of each deck, because uh, I honestly just swing away and hope I don't hit, like, a one and get countered. That's pretty much what I do, too. I mean, we're basically in sync at this point. So, what cars would the organization members turn into if they could turn into cars? You are such a fuckboy, you know that? <laughs> I hope you know what that means, and I hope you reconsider using that word. No, no, I'm good, thanks. I think, you just, I think I described you perfectly there. Well, I suppose I made a comment about you liking beefy men, so I guess that makes sense that you have one for that for me. Alright, going straight into the boss fight here. What you don't see is me cutting out like a half an hour to 45 minutes worth of grinding. You don't have to grind as much as you did in Sora's story. And, you know, just to give you an example, uh, you finish Sora's campaign roughly around like level 60, 61. It's roughly about 50, 51 for Riku. Well, I mean, it is appreciated that you cut that out because nobody really needs to see that. One thing I actually didn't notice or even acknowledge in uh, Sora's story, and I think this is exclusive to RE Chain of Memories, when you're in the acid and you're reloading, obviously something that uh, Riku doesn't really need to deal with recharge-wise, you don't get harmed by the acid. Oh, really? That's an interesting trick. Doesn't Parasite Cage look like something you can win from a Japanese claw machine? About what claw machines have you been going to lately? Japanese ones, clearly. <laughs> You just stab him in the mouth over and over. I'm sure that'll work. <laughs> I'm surprised the sword didn't go in the mouth holes. Once there was acid, now there is done. I feel so bad. I like my acid. Uh... There we go. Monstro is done. So I think this has been how many appearances for Parasite Cage now? Like three or four? Well, twice in this story. Do you mean overall? Well, overall, in, like, the Kingdom Hearts series, because, man, Darkseid has had a ton of amazing press. The guy's very prolific. He's showing up in all these Kingdom Hearts games, and he's really hitting, you know, the streets in terms to promote his appearances. So that's commendable, that kind of work ethic. Uh, Parasite Cage is more proud. You know, Tumors, they don't really have that kind of motivation that giant beings of darkness do. That's true. I don't really imagine a tumor having the ability to build much discipline and promote themselves. Oh man, expect all this and more eccentric commentary as we go through Reverse Rebirth, because we used up all the good tidbits in Sora's story. Still think the walls look like a Splatoon match gone bad, but that's just me. The inside of me, after some Skittles. Oh wait, I've already used that one. Now you may notice that we've got roughly about five minutes left. Can you guess what's going to happen once we step through this door? Boss fight. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I was going to say cutscene otherwise, because you know the fucking things take that long. <laughs> well, it's Kingdom Hearts. It's either column A or column B. Or column both, unfortunately. Oh, there are rupees on the wall. Are you with Ansem? I take it your lips don't function just like mine. Let us say that he is not the Ansem with which you are familiar. Yes, I have a copy of the script, and it says right here, I can't mention Xemnas by name. Yeah, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 2 is really going to dash that hope, isn't it? I love Vex's voice actor so fucking much. It's like when uh, Kefka showed up in Dissidia, oh, and they got like Dave, Dave yes. like English Kefka. Dave Wittenberg is his name, the guy who played him. Oh my god, that dude was damn near perfect for Kefka, I think. I hope he comes back for the new one. They probably will get the same people to come back again for the new Dissidia, which I am really looking forward to, and I know they will probably have online in the console release, so I'm looking forward to that. I love Christopher Sabat as a uh, Garland. Fucking sexy Garland, man. He is the guy who made me like Garland. 
darkness is my enemy. Says the guy who literally bounced on Parasite Cage using the powers of darkness. Yeah, that's true. You're being a bit hypocritical, Riku. I shall take you on. Oh, he doesn't do his sexy summoning animation. Do not want. Now you're just sad, aren't you? <laughs> I'm a little bit salty. I brought it off screen. <laughs> he just pulls it out of his pocket or something. <laughs> I have a weapon too, did you notice? It turns out all the flashy lights that like enemies use when they summon their weapons is just like a visual distraction. It's a very expensive kind of budget. Marluxia, you know, notifies him, Listen, uh, could you not summon your weapon anymore? We're running out of special effects dust. Well, what do you want us to say? We've fought this guy, like, twice already. <laughs> the only thing I can think of that he does differently, he has a thing where he tries to make it, like, Eternal Winter or some shit, and the whole field becomes engulfed in ice, and you've basically got to break that, or your health will st steadily, like, go down and down. Does he take double damage from Dark Faraga? I'm not sure. I think ice magic heals him, though, but thankfully Riku doesn't have to worry about that. Because, I mean, like, what do you classify Dark Faraga as? Is it a dark-type attack or a fire-type attack? It's dark. Okay, well, Dark Faraga, I guess that makes sense. Maybe it was dual-type, you never know. Here we go, buddy! This move that kicked the shit out of us in the first game. Hell yeah. Man, it feels pretty good to finally use that, huh? Mm-hmm. He is pretty happy about what's going on, even though he's getting his ass kicked. But he's just getting, like, all the data right now. You've got no idea how many, like, sheets of paper he's stuffing into his pocket. Yeah, he, I, like, and then in the next game, he came up with that little data circle so he didn't have to keep writing it down during a fight. I guess he didn't like it, considering he blocked it. Let me hit you with my super slow icicle attack. D-mode, go! You know, there's only so much you can say about two men beating the shit out of each other. I mean, it's been practically happening in every video game. Street Fighter... <laughs> Sorry, just the way you boil down video game concepts is amusing to me. That's what it is! Video games as a core are just two guys beating the shit out of each other, and we charge you $60 for it! Uh-huh. <laughs> Alright, let's end this charade. Don't you mean charade, or do you spell that with a U over there in the UK? Yeah, charade. Oh, reverse rebirth, y'all. Ah. Uh. Not too hard of a fight. I'm not entirely sure if he fights Vexen a second time, but we all know what Vexen's eventual fate is, so I guess it's a... a something point, a moot point. There we go. Yeah, the dude gets iced, if you will. <laughs> More like fucking immolated from the inside out. Well, I was making a pun, but yes, he got burned alive. Oh, I guess that joke got a bit of a cool reception. Ah, oh, I hate you so much. Lol, 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 troll you. Please don't talk about your excitement, Vexen. Yeah, how can you feel excitement, anyway? It's like it's fake or something. Oh, whatever. Well, they do remember having these emotions, and they just fake them to piss people off. It's a bunch of trolls, really. Man, we got through two worlds, not even 20 minutes. That's reverse for both for you, I guess. We'll see you guys next time for a couple more worlds. Bye for now. Watch this sexy flip!